Hello and welcome to the Walk and Love podcast. I'm TJ. And I'm Brooke. And today we're going to talk about integrated and some of the, the first talk there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making us a part of your week. And thank you for li- leaving reviews. The Walk in Love podcast is a weekly conversation between Brooke and I about emotions, rhythms, marriage, parenting, and faith. It's a place where we laugh and sometimes cry as we try to find language to live a full life. I almost sent it over to you right for the reviews, but then I forgot that that's part of it now. Oh. So thanks for leaving reviews. Transition. Is it, is it actually my turn? Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. This is was written by Amy. Amy Kate. Amy Kate. Okay, so title, not a commuter. (laughs) Five stars. If your Monday doesn't start with this podcast, it should. Get your coffee brewed, pop your baby in the high chair, pull up Walk and Love on your listening app of choice, ours is Spotify, now that you can watch on there too, and get ready to start your day with some laughs and wisdom sprinkled in there. You might shed a tear, so having tissues close by are suggested. Don't forget to mark your calendars for the next clothing launch and put a reminder in your phone for Mondays to listen to the podcast. Okay, I love you. Bye. Amy Kate 96. I think that was her original screen name. Ooh. But were people born in 96 making screen names? Like AIM screen names? I don't think so. So old. Because I would have been... Here's... It would have been like maybe like 98, 99... Early 2000s yeah. when I actually had like an AOL AIM. What was your screen name? Uh, Sunny Morrow. Okay, nice. Which is now our one child's name and our other child's middle they name. They were named after your first screen name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so deep. Yeah. No, that's because that was my nickname. But before that, I had an AOL address. Oh. That was Angel Girl. <laughs> Angel Girl 7? It was probably, probably had my birthday in there somewhere. But here's the thing. Not because of what you think. I had a cat <laughs> named Angel. Because like and when I think of I someone was like, like young, and so I know, oh I know it's like not me. When I think of someone that resonates with like an angel like persona, it is not you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the person that would have Tinkerbell on the back of their like their car is probably bedazzled. <laughs> yes, mine is not. Yeah, yeah. so. But yeah, I was just like, I'm sure people would have thought that. What was Angel Girl from? Um, That I had a cat named Angel and I was a girl. Like, nailed it. Poetry in motion. Basically. Mine was MT, capital M, capital T, because I went to Manham Township. Right. Smart. Got to label your school in there. Got to have your school. People need to know where I go to high school. Okay. Um, And then the T, the capital T was the beginning of the word Theo. Mm. So see, I kind of smushed it together. Dunder Mifflin. So you did like Infinity. your name and your school, and I did like my pet and my gender. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We were nailing it, nailing it back then. <laughs> Mine would have been pumpkin boy. <laughs> P- pumpkin boy. If you just did your your pet's name, that's good. Actually, my very first cat ever. Oh, there's pumpkin. <laughs> oh, Pumpkin Boy's online. Let's see if he wants to chat. <laughs> uh, but see, Angel wasn't my first pet. Not that it has to be your first, but I think the first see, pet can... I remember was either Moses, which was a cat. Okay. So Moses girl or Shadow. Maybe she's Jewish. Shadow girl. Hey, maybe. We don't she's know. A, she's an Israelite. Maybe. <laughs> Moses girl. Yeah. She's really into Moses. <laughs> Um, you see, but you couldn't have done what I did because MT, man, I'm township. Correct. Started the word T. Now ours is was the, MC and I don't yeah. have a, my last name used to start with a C, but M- so M- how Courtney. could have I, I could and then 16, M Theo 16 was my original. Nice. And then at college, <laughs> I changed it. Solid. <laughs> this, I remember chatting with you on this one. To whatish, whatish, which is the sound of Up a high, high five. <laughs> Which, which, yeah. So mine remained Sunny Morrow for much of my life. Um, I remember, what? I remember I trying to pick one for my brother, who's four years younger than me. So I think I would have been in high school, and he was either <laughs> maybe like boy. just a freshman, 
or I think he was, he had to have been a freshman because he knew what this was. And so we went with spicy chicken Thursday oh. because that was our favorite menu day at the high school cafeteria. Oh, okay. Spicy chicken Thursday. Nice. That's a good when one. When they had the spicy chicken That's sandwiches solid. that were That's really incredible. Solid. And so I would follow an Instagram account called Spike, Spicy Chicken Thursday. I, I don't would think I would follow Pumpkin Boy. You don't know, babe. I don't know unless he like carves them and he's like really Ooh. like a skilled carver. I don't want to put Pumpkin Boy in a corner. What does oh. he do? What does he do on the off season though? Does he have a stash of pumpkins or does he go into other fruits and veggies? That's true. Does he carve Board watermelons? A little longer. Oh. Anyways, does he carve trees? Is he even does he even use pumpkins anymore? Has he moved on? I don't yeah. know. Um, okay. That's good. Um, <laughs> we're done with that. Uh, <laughs> I got a text that I want to read. Okay. It's from our friend, Kim. Oh, Kim- Kimberly. Our friend, our yeah. actual friend, Kim. our actual friend, Kim. Yeah. I just went souvenir shopping for the kids at Sheets five minutes from our house. <laughs> Made me think of you on Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what I want. That's what I want in this world. My real friends to think of me when they shop at Sheets. <laughs> I got them gum and ticks. <laughs> That's a souvenir. She did candy. say that they got them sweatshirts. They were they were in Vermont. They got them sweatshirts in in Vermont, oh, but they okay. wanted to get something more exciting because, like you know, a yeah. sweatshirt for a kid is like, oh, yeah. thanks, yeah. mom. And so, yeah. Oh, I that's just, I very literally funny. just got that right now. That's so funny. Um, okay, so <laughs> we're, we're sponsoring our episodes this year, as we know, as I say every time. Um, so I thought it would be fun to have Chat GPT write an advertisement for us. What is Chat GPT? If you live under a rock, which some of you I may. I didn't know until yeah, you told me about it. It is an AI chat bot that I think eventually will take over and dominate us all. Probably. That feels like the route we're heading. That yeah. feels like the road we're jumped, yeah. but it'll be fine. It's fine. Yeah. I don't think it can swim across an ocean, so you mainlanders are screwed, but we'll be okay. <laughs> um, so. It will build a boat. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> With lasers. Um <laughs> So it's like a chat. It's like an AI chat bot. There's a bunch of them out there. AI, meaning artificial, artificial intelligence. intelligence. So you can just like give it tat. Like sometimes when I'm having trouble doing math, I'll ask. Instead some, of Googling, like, like what's the, yeah. which I would do. So I, I feel like it, eventually it's going to replace Google. Like, mm. because it, because like you can ask one question and then a follow-up question and like get to information quicker. Yeah. I did hear that like 25% of its information is made up. So I hope you're not writing papers based on it. That's um, very high. Where did I just hear that? AI is no longer, was Phoebe there? That, or not no longer, that AI is not, you cannot cite it in a scientific report. Oh. Because I guess maybe it's wrong. Maybe I don't know. So here was my, this is what you this asked is my prompt. It. Okay. Write an ad for a company called Walk and Love that is oh launching its spring collection on March 9th. They create limited edition reminders you can wear and are your go to daily outfit. Okay. 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 Are That's you what ready? you gave it. That's what I gave it. Okay. Are you ready? What'd Chatty have to say? <clears throat> Old chat chat. Um, chat. I should have called it chat chat. I I would follow a chat chat. Um, right next to Spicy Chicken Thursday <laughs> and Pumpkin Boy. <laughs> looking we to, should ask it to write a script for Pumpkin Boy's okay, first episode. Um, looking to add a touch of inspiration and motivation to your daily wardrobe? Ooh. Look no further than Walk and Love. The company that creates limited edition reminders you can wear to uplift and encourage you throughout your day. And now we're excited to announce the launch of our spring collection available starting March 9th. Our latest designs feature fresh, vibrant colors and inspiring message is to help you stay positive and motivated as the weather warms up. Oh. From comfortable and stylish t-shirts to beautiful jewelry uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you'll love to wear <laughs> every day. Our spring collection has something for everyone. And as always, each piece is designed with the utmost care and attention to detail. Mm. So you can be sure that you're getting a high quality product that will last. At Walk and Love, we believe that you can, that what you wear can have a powerful impact on how you feel and how you approach your day. Our limited edition reminders are designed to help you stay focused on your goals and remind you of the important things in life, whether you're at work, running errands, or just hanging out with friends. So mark your calendars for March 9th and get ready to add some extra inspiration to your wardrobe with Walk and Love Spring Collection. Check out our website to preview our latest designs and get ready to make a statement with your daily outfit. Wow. Good job, Chatty. We don't sell jewelry. I agree with most of that. We don't sell jewelry. Although, didn't you say we might have bracelets? We might have some bracelets. Okay. Okay. Um, Good job, Chat Chat. I mean, I guess it helps. Our clothing helps you follow your goals. If your goal is like genuinely to be
be more joyful and yeah. to worry less and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's going to help you crush your pumpkin boy YouTube channel, but well done, right? Well done. Okay. While we're talking to chat, chat, we might okay. as well keep this party going. Write an ad for Carpet Vore, a new technology <laughs> that will automatically clean anything you drop on the floor but won't eat your feet. Hey. Are you ready? Oh, I am ready. Introducing Carpet Vore, <laughs> the revolutionary new technology that will change the way you clean your floors forever. With Carpet Vore, you'll never have to worry about cleaning up spills or messes again. Our innovative system automatically cleans, cleans up anything you drop on the floor so you can focus on your day-to-day -day tasks without interruption. But here's the best part. <laughs> Carpet Vore <laughs> won't eat your feet. <laughs> 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 That is the best part. <laughs> Unlike other automatic cleaning systems that can be dangerous or even harmful, Carpet War is designed to be completely safe for you and your family. Our technology is smart enough to differentiate between food and other objects so you can trust that your flooring is always clean and safe. Whether you're a busy parent juggling a million things at once, a pet owner dealing with muddy paw prints, or just someone who wants a cleaner home, Without the hassle of constant cleaning, Carpet Vore is the solution you've been looking for. Our easy to use system is customizable to fit your home's needs and is designed to work seamlessly with any decor. Say goodbye to spills and messes and hello to a cleaner, more comfortable home with Carpet Vore. Visit our website today to learn more about our technology <laughs> the AI and how it can work for, for you. you. Oh, that's so good. The AI is like, this is a great idea. <laughs> Suddenly it's yeah. like taking investors. <laughs> Carpetvore.com backslash AI. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chatty. man. That's good. Chat, chat. I, so. I mean, it can differentiate between your food and your food. <laughs> I love That's good. The, That's unlike good. other automatic cleaning systems, that can be dangerous. Oh, yeah. People vacuum up their own feet all the time. <laughs> Not anymore, though. <laughs> Say goodbye. You you, you uh, vacuumers that only have eight toes. It's your own <laughs> fault. It's your own fault. It's your own fault. <laughs> all right. So that's it for... <laughs> For that, uh, we're done with that. Um, the and spring collection, March 9th, buy a t-shirt. It'd be amazing. Buy whatever you would like. Buy whatever you'd like. Yeah. But we sell mostly t-shirts. <laughs> um, if every podcast listener bought a shirt, it would be our best-selling collection of all time. Mm. That's the truth. Yeah. And that would be true. amazing. So March 9th, um, speaking of the collection, we're going to do about Rushmore, Rushmore, Rushmore of... You better move that mic away. Yeah, you better do that. Items from the collection. Caca! You want to go first? Z Z oh. You forgot. I'm free. I'm happy to not interrupt you, but you better do it right um, <laughs> So I'll go first. I, my Mount Rushmore is Brooke's going to grab him. Go on, get up, Brooke. Um, um, you're missing quite a show on YouTube. It definitely just sounded like you farted, but that was the chair. <laughs> Okay, so I decided for this Mount Rushmore to pick items that I thought look that like are my favorite, like cool. That is your favorite. That doesn't mean you wear them every day, right? You usually pick your favorite based on what you would wear every day. Yes, but if I pick that, it'd be the four black shirts, and that's sort of a boring Mount Rushmore. So these are yeah. my Mount Rushmore of items that if you wear more than one color, <laughs> you should consider. You. <laughs> First is the one I'm wearing. Choose joy and walk in love on a black tee. Yeah, I. You know, I was working on product descriptions and writing about the designs. And for me, it was like walk in love was, you know, th that's what started it all. Mm -hmm. That phrase, you know, therefore be imitators of Christ as dearly loved children and walk in love as Christ has loved us. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. And choose joy has become such a part of the brand and sort of what we talk about and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And so for me, when we were doing the event, which is where this shirt originated, I was like, man, what a great. Like, that'd be so great to have. I've tried to put them together on T-shirts many times. And yeah. for the event, it just kind of clicked. Yeah. And I just like, I feel like if you're walking in love, you're choosing joy. Mm -hmm. And if you're choosing joy, you're probably walking in love. Mm -hmm. Like, they go together really well. So on black, that's my favorite. I really, so the the one hoodie that we have available, the Heather Blue Lagoon walk in love cursive hoodie. This is my favorite hoodie we've ever sold. The actual item. Yeah, yes. I have a loved and forgiven one that I think is 10 years old yes. and I still wear it. I wore it yesterday. Yeah. It's just like a little baggy, little boxy and completely amazing. The other item that I really like is this, uh, consider the wildflowers, uh, ivory, like midweight tea with the big flowers on the back. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's cool. It's, it's got cool. like cool vibes. 
It's very like cool. if you're cool, you're buying this one. Mm. So I don't know if I will. Um, <laughs> I I have this ongoing joke with our babysitter Abby, who's 24, mm-hmm. and um, saw Frozen her senior year of high school, which that shook me to my core. <laughs> um, Let and, it go, babe. And I learned a new phrase, so I, I tried it out on her, and she just can't handle it. She's just like, stop. I, don't, I think because we pay her, she doesn't totally just say stop. <laughs> But I think that's what you, I can see it in her eyes that all she wants is this conversation to, to end. Um, <laughs> and yet you don't end yet it. I will never end it. Okay. Bet. Mm. That's the new phrase. Never heard Bet. of it. Bet. Which like Brad was describing it to me, Brad from uh, Ellis Custom Creation, Brad Ellis from Ellis Custom Creation. Yes, that Brad. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. He was describing it to me in Austin and I was like, okay, how do you say it? And it's like, you say like, I'm going to drink my coffee, I'm going to get coffee. And you say bet. It's like... It's a way to agree. It's like a way to confirm. But you don't ask a question. No, you're not asking a question. It's just like, yeah. but it comes from like, I bet. Like I'm betting that that will happen. It's dumb. Or no. I bet that this is dumb. Bet. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it'd be like, you'd be like, I'm going to drink coffee. I'd be like, confirm. Right. It's weird. Anyways. So if you say bet, you're probably buying the Consider the Wildflowers. (laughs) Sure. Because you're cool. And then last but not least, the uh, Lion tie-dye sweatshirt, which is very extremely super limited. Mm -hmm. I know that for a fact that this one will sell out and probably might not even make it through the subscriber-only VIP launch on March 8th. So if you want this one, specifically it's this one, it's the other tie-dye one, it's the one Brooks wearing, and then it's uh, one of the Carolina blue ones. Mm -hmm. They will all sell out. So Others may as well, but those are are the ones that are like for sure, they're not going to last, so... And you can subscribe on Instagram for $5 and you get one day early access. Yeah. And you can cancel literally the day after you shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So mine are, so I have the cool, the cool kids consider the wildflowers tea on mine. You betcha. You betcha. That's a great tea. I have the peach radiate joy because I love me a peach tea. Are there flowers on the back of that? No. Oh, stickers. I was like, what is on the back? Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, and, and so I wear a lot of peach teas. There's a lot of peach in my closet. Peach girl, 77. Peach. And I love the... At AOL.com. <laughs> I love the design. Um, love the smiley. And then I have the Walk in Love cursive tie-dyed tea. We'll sell out. Which is the same. It's like the same tie-dye, tie-dye as yep. the sweatshirt. I think, well, they vary because every single one is tie-dyed differently, but the sweatshirt looks a little darker. Yeah, it's but it's a, but still I think, the I think same that's color because print. Of the fabric. I agree. And then last You mean bit, you bet? I bet. No, just bet. I'm confused. My last one is the You Are So Deeply Loved Yellow. What do we call them? What color is this? Harvest Gold. Ooh, that's accurate. Harvest Gold Lightweight Sweatshirt. I could picture Pumpkin Boy wearing that. Oh, probably. Or Pumpkin Girl. Pumpkin Girl. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and mine why don't you talk are, about the item that you're wearing? Oh, and the item that I'm... Oh, I guess that's why I meant to only pick up three. Yeah. Because this is on the list. Well, today Mount Rushmore has five. Wow. So, um, yeah. We've carved another president. We have. Uh, this one is so cool because... <laughs> for many reasons. <laughs> Did ChatGPT help you write that? Yes. <laughs> I need a ChatGPT in my life. With one simple clink, just install the chip in your brain oh, and gosh. you're well on your way. No, I can't. I can't even. Um... I really like the one that I'm wearing and I showed it yesterday on Instagram. It is like a very boxy women's tee with like a high low hem. Yeah. So it's like longer in the back, a little bit shorter in the front. I really like very the flattering. thick collar. It's like it has this really thick collar at the top, but I wouldn't say that it's like Tight. like a super high yeah. collar. And so I like the combination there. And the nice thing is that even though it's a women's size, I'm still wearing a medium. Like that shows you how usually I go up one yeah. to two sizes. So if I'm a unisex medium, I'm a women's large or extra large. Yeah. And I am wearing a women's medium because wow. of how it's cut. And so I'm into it. Wow, 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 wow. So yeah, uh, let us know. Those are my five Mount Rushmore's. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so let us know. Here we go. Oh. We are building a butt clencher community page. Mm. We are building it off of Facebook, we've decided. Um, the link will be in the show notes. Yeah. And we... so. Real talk. Real talk with DJ. I love the idea of a community page. Yeah. But I don't love the idea of me 
and Brooke being the sole propellers of community interaction. Like right. we post podcasts, we post content, we do this for our job. And so the community page really is going to be for you, beautiful butt clenchers, to talk, chat, have fun, enjoy, mm-hmm. post memes, just do your thing, girl, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, I mean, we'll be involved. We'll, we'll interact and, and engage as well. But I just definitely feel like as we've built this sort of butt clencher community, there's, it's really hard. like we did the subscriber chat a little bit, but that's like capped at 30. Like, it was great. The The complaint was that it was capped at 30. Capped at 30. And yeah. then like we do another one and it's like, well, these people aren't talking to it. Like, yeah. and so we're, we're just going to build this community page for you to use to your liking. Um, and well, of course, following the community guidelines. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, so. I'm excited about it. I would like to start. I don't have a way currently to talk to people about episodes except for one-on-one conversations. If, right. if those even happen, yeah. like in a DM or somewhere like that or in person. Yeah. But so just don't be a weirdo mm-hmm. and uh, we'll see you there. <laughs> Link is in the show notes because I still haven't built it yet, but I am. I'm working on it. Okay. Um, but let us know there what your Mount Rushmore of spring designs are. Ooh. Let's get the party started there. And we're going to... Should we give somebody their Mount Rushmore? Ooh, I... <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Great yeah. idea. We're going to give you, one of you, your Mount Rushmore. So that will propel you to... Yes. You know, click, click, click and sign up. Yeah. You have to have a profile picture. That's a... That's a mm. No... Shadow Ghost. You can have a screen name. You can be Pumpkin Boy or Angel Girl or Peach Girl 77 or Amy Kate, who left the re- amazing review. Yeah. Um, you don't need to put your full name, but you need a picture. Yeah, for sure. All right. Cool. Anything else? I don't know. How was our week? What did we do? How was your week? That's what else I need to ask you. Re- how no, was your week? real question. How was our real week? Real question. What did like, we do? how was your week? I, um, our weekend was good. You had just Question gotten mark? back. <laughs> this is where uh, I'm at. Like yeah. I'm like backtracking in my head. You had just gotten back. I got so back our, on Wednesday. We recorded the last podcast on yes, Thursday. Yes, there we go. So the weekend was very chill. I did. I started the weekend off by doing the second workout of the CrossFit Games. Yes. Which is so fun. Like um, I have like, you know, there, there are people who are competing to like advance and, you know, the, the winner is called the fittest human on the planet or something like that. And there's documentaries every year about them. Yeah. But there's like money involved yeah. or can like, you know, sponsorships, you can actually, like you, you can like, make your career out of, yeah, out of yeah, yeah. being a CrossFit athlete. Yeah. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can tell that that is not my goal. Um, okay. Not yet, at least. Don't put, don't put Teddy in a box. <laughs> don't put a pumpkin boy in a box. Unless you're <laughs> shipping one of his pumpkins. Then. <laughs> I was going to say, unless it's a pie and then I would love it delivered <laughs> in a box. Um, but it's been really fun to, which is, so let me backtrack. And right over here. Then you'll be saved. <laughs> Jamie, right back up. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then you'll be saved. Do you want to do it a third time or? No. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I was going to, but now that you ask, I don't want now, to. Now I'm, that you said something, I'm gonna uh, withhold, I'm not going to do gonna it. I'm going to withhold that from you and I will never see the blind side. So don't ask me to. <laughs> blind side. Um, so a year ago, I kind of started doing CrossFit. I'd done yeah. it. Years before in Pennsylvania, but it just never, like, I did it for a while, and then I just stopped. I was Quitter. Like, this is over. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're done with this. Um, <laughs> it was probably because, like... There was a lot of There reasons. was a lot of reasons. A lot, like, and so, on different levels. So, when I came, when we were in, when we first lived here, I was, like, kind of doing my own workout thing here and there. And then at church, I talked to someone, and he was like, oh, I go to this place called the Gym Maui. It's great. Like, mm-hmm. and so I went, met the owner. Uh, the guy that runs it and it was like super fun and there was this crossover class which was like crossfit but without all the like kind of hard lifting stuff yeah. and i was like that sounds perfect for me so i did that for a while yeah and then about a year ago i started to get like pretty consistent yeah. and i remember people doing the open last year and yeah. thinking these people are crazy yeah like this is dumb i'm never gonna do this kind of thing like right just whatever like it's just that you know, it's for them, but it's not for me. I'm just here to like get in shape and be able to like keep up with the kids and play with the kids and stuff like that. Fast forward one year, I'm all in baby. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun. Mm -hmm. Like being like, and it's interesting to me because like the CrossFitters there are like, man, it's so fun to be like part of this huge community. And maybe I talked about this, did Mm -hmm. I? Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it's just like, yeah, like the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And so that's what I said to them. Right. <laughs> While they're weeping on the floor. As I was running floor. my sprints, I was yelling, Turner burn. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they thought I was just really sore. Right, right, so right, right, right. Maybe I need to clarify Be a little my more message. clear in your message. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. There were shuttle sprints. So yes. that would have worked. Yeah. Turner burn. Turner burn. Turner burn. So welcome to our gym. There's one weird guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He has a friend called Chat GPT. <laughs> Calls him uh, Chat Chat. Uh, yeah, so you did that on Friday. Did that. Sabbath was really chill on Saturday. We actually didn't go to the beach because... Um, took I the girls to the aquarium in the afternoon. And then Sunday, like you shared a lot about Sunday on Instagram. It was like a normal set them up Sunday up. like just get all the things ready to rock and roll for and the week ahead we're in collection mode so a lot of collection yeah. work uh still going to the gym but a lot of collection work and now we're at the podcast I got a haircut wow so mm. much is happening it's so exciting <laughs> um well I think that's it for the recap sure is there anything else you want to just chat about before we jump into the I don't think so deep things not that I'm aware of are you sure I don't know. Now I'm stressed that I should have something to chat about. <laughs> um, I could ask Chat GPT for some. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. Conversation topics. <laughs> um, I've been married for 13 years. What do oh I talk, my goodness! What do I talk to my wife about? My wife is interested in these things. Yikes! They're, that's like <laughs> Yikes. Too, that's like too close to reality for maybe some people. Um, okay, so if this is your first episode, welcome. There's something that I'm involved in every year called Integrated. It's a group uh, run by this organization called Family Teams uh, by Jeff Bethke and Jeremy Pryor. We meet up twice a year. If you are in Integrated, you are these th two of these three things at least. Most of us are all three of these things. There's like mm -hmm. one guy. One guy doesn't have kids and one has one on the way. Mm. So you're a dad. Yep. You are a business owner. Mm-hmm. Or like a high, or you work at like a high level in the business that you're a part of, right? Um, and you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Those three things, and we meet up twice a year, and it has been it has radically transformed our lives. Mm -hmm. would, could could you say that? Oh yeah, I would say that. Mm -hmm. Would you say that? I would say that. You can go ahead and say it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm feeling like. Lucy goosey today. Okay. Are you here for it or? I'm here for it. Are they here for it? I don't know. <laughs> Let us know on the community page, I guess. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this is the fourth year in and last week I kind of shared sort of like some epiphany moments at it and now like we're going to spend the next few weeks kind of just talking about the things we talked about. So normally in the past I've mm -hmm. done these like big brain dumps, but honestly it, it deserves way more attention than one episode of me reading my notes because right, right. we talk about things that could have transformed our lives and, and will transform your lives if you if you buy into them. Mm -hmm. um, and so what was great is like, this was the first time that we had like a bunch of new guys. Well, we get new guys every time, but there was like 20 new guys this time. Yeah. And so Jeremy decided to kick things off by basically talking about like how every man or person should belong to a conspiracy mm. which i you know i love that like and, and he was like you know not like a tinfoil hat type of conspiracy although there are plenty of people who belong to those mm -hmm. um but like a conspiracy on like how to do life differently or how to mm. like change the way that you think about life or yeah. like you know like there's a conspiracy like there's a group of people right now this is a good example who are conspiring with each other that like the food that we eat mm. from the grocery store is not as good for it. Like it's not very good for us. Right. And so they're part of that conspiracy. Like right. is part of it true? Absolutely. Yeah. Could some of them take it too far? Probably. Yeah. You know, but like that, that's a good example. So like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm part of this group that wants to eat super clean and fresh and healthy. And so like we're going to avoid processed food and seed oil and all this kind of stuff. So like, yeah, that's a really good way to, d to describe it. Um, there was a, which is this like, it's almost like a, against the norm there's some mystery yeah. to it maybe not everybody knows everything about all of it like yeah. there's this yeah. like if you homeschool your kids you're <laughs> part of a conspiracy that like i would think so yes i don't want to be in the public school system or the mm -hmm. private school system or you know yeah if you are 
like for us, like we're not pushing our kids in a direct path towards college. Right. Like we are part of that conspiracy that college really probably doesn't have as much as we, ha- as much weight and value and value that society has said it has. Yeah. Uh, and so, so he, Jeremy started off with like an integrated yeah. and family teams at large is like, we're part of a conspiracy and here are the six mm. sort of, uh, tent poles of our consp- pillars. Yeah. Pillars. There yeah. you go. Of our conspiracy. And so I'm going to read those to you. And, you know, again, like I think, I think sometimes when we hear someone kind of talking about this t- type of stuff, it's in just like the regular integrated yeah, notes. Yeah, I'll find it. Thank you. Um, uh, at least this is my personality. Like when <laughs> I hear, like there's the guy on Instagram, Carnivore MD, <laughs> um, yeah. who is part of the conspiracy that like seed oils and nut milks are ruining, ruining our insides. Insides. Yeah. Which there might be some science there's to back that of, up. There's actually a lot of yeah. truth to that. <laughs> But he is sometimes so intense with that information that it's like I find it's my easy to discredit. I find myself like, just being like, yikes. okay, like chill out. And 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 I kind of probably fall into like the 80-20 rule, which mm-hmm. I think is is really good of like if 80% of the things that I'm doing specifically with eating are yeah. beneficial, then I don't think the 20% is going to make me die 50 years earlier. <laughs> you know, unless it's like meth- methamphetamine, you know. <laughs> So yeah, as long as meth isn't in your 20%, I think you're okay. <laughs> Crack cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the second time I've, I have said that today, like Schmidt. So just that's where uh, I'm at. And so I, my, incur- what I, why I'm saying that is like some of you might, like I might give you some of these pillars mm. and you might think, oh, well, I can't do that one. So like I'm, I'm throw, throw I'm out a, the baby with yeah. the bath water. Yeah. And so I would just encourage you that like, you know, if there are, there are elements of all of this stuff that we talk about integrated. That I think any human can take, mm. any person can start implementing in their lives. And I think it would have a radical impact yeah. for sure. Um, and so just, yeah, don't like, I feel like we put our guard up and we start to say things like, oh, well, that's easy for you because of A, B, C, or D. Yeah. And it's like, you know, but it, but we also work at it. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't easy for us at the beginning and we're about four, four years into doing life this way. Yeah. And things have radically changed in our lives. Mm-hmm. So number one. I love, well, I love that he titled it the code on how we think differently. Yeah. Like that's helpful. I'm like, I know what I'm getting. Okay. You're about to give me the code, the pillars yeah. on yeah. how this thinking, di- what this thinking different looks like. And what's interesting is he, um, like people join integrated a lot of different ways. So yeah, like some people, yeah. So like some people are it. like deep within the family team's funnel yeah. and they're like at a family team's weekend. And so those guys join and they're like kind of on second base already. Like yeah. They kind of already they, know they, what's they've, up. They've been, they've been, you know, reading, they've read Jeremy's book or Jeff's book and they've like watched courses and have sort of like digested some, they have the language, they know what Shabbat means. So there's some guys like that. Yeah. There's some guys who've been in the group who started like that or, or who have been around Jeremy for like a decade and they're Mm -hmm. like on third base. Yeah. And then there's guys like me who started in the dugout Mm -hmm. four years ago. And now I've finally made my way to like, I'm probably rounding third Mm -hmm. in terms of like understanding the ways we think differently. Yeah. Not implementing them all, but just simply understanding them. Yeah. And then there's guys like, so Brad Ellis from Ellis Custom Creations, he was on the phone with a potential advertising. Yeah, you said this last week. Yeah. Didn't you talk about this? Maybe. I think you did. Um, And this guy joined like two days later. So right. he's coming in. Doesn't know anything. Doesn't know any of this language is like, yeah. you know, and there's a few guys like that who like a friend has invited him or they've, they've heard this friend talk about it. And it's just like, <laughs> And so it's just a fascinating group. How they get there in the first place. How they get there in the first place because I I think men are desperate for, I mean, I know I am. I like it is, I I will not miss it. Right. You know, like I just won't. Yeah. Like if you're having a baby, we're traveling to Austin, you're going to deliver in Austin. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. Um, That would be the only reason I think I would like if some, you know, if you you were having another baby or if. Big health emergency or something. But. You know, it's, it's just such a highlight. And so it's just interesting. Like, I just love that environment. And that that's like, because then what we do is we talk about all these things. And what you were saying is I think men are looking for that. Yeah, 100%. Deeply. deeply. Sometimes I don't even know if they know that's what yeah. they're looking for or what feels like it's missing or lacking or 
Yeah. Yeah. So because it's not talked about a lot. Because it's not talked about. And it's interesting that like a lot of this stuff is like never taught in church. And you're mm-hmm. just like, oh, this is frustrating me that like I wasn't 18 and a young man learning, learning this. Learning all this. Yeah. Um, and now I'm 37. Yep. Second time you've questioned your age today. <laughs> and oh, yeah. 37. Wow. 37 is really not that old. It's not that old, but I'm 37. It's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay, so code on how we think differently. Number one, rhythms over goals. Yes. Come Bet. on, Jeremy. <laughs> Bet. Bet. <laughs> um, we want to set goal. We want to set goals, but there is something very difficult difficult about goals and family. You don't rise to the levels of your goals. You fall to the levels of your systems. That's James Clear. That's a quote from James. That'll Clare. preach, and I couldn't agree more. And so, just this idea that, like, as as members of this group, as people who want to do life and family differently, because, you know, we've all seen the stories of, of kids who grow up and their dad was just like a thousand percent focused on growing wealth. And like all the kid wants is to play catch. You know, there's mm-hmm. like that. It's probably a commercial like that. And we're oh, just a bunch know. of commercials. Yeah. <laughs> Whole bunch of commercials. So what, what are they, what are they selling in those commercials? Oh, uh, anything. Carpet bore. <laughs> just Kit Kats. Um, <laughs> Yeah, really bleak Kit Kat commercial. <laughs> it is really. Give he's alone with his with his mitt. His Kit Kat is melting. Give me a break, He's no one dad. to snap it with. <laughs> oh, be the dad that can snap your kid's Kit Kat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so instead, if you design your life around goals, you will you will start to go in that direction. You will mm-hmm. fall to the level of your systems, like yeah, and you'll really fall to the level of like. You're like, if you have a kid that's super challenging, you'll fall to the level like that will always be your pain point. If goals mm. is your like, or you'll, you'll fall. Like if, you, if you're running a business and like finances is your weakness, mm-hmm. that will always like, you'll just always kind of circle the plane around that yeah. and, and just live in a perpetual state of frustration and anger and you know, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So can I ask with the systems thing, which yeah, I know they were quoting somebody else, but like. They're, they're people, met, uh, people there, like I'm not, not even just Jeremy, lots of people there, like systems are so beneficial and helpful. This isn't a poo poo on systems. No, no, no. This, this is, is just like a, when relating to goals as your goal in life. Yeah. Cause like, like the, the, if you uh, don't have systems in place to, do you see what I'm, I'm kind of trying to ask? Like, yeah. I don't think it's poo pooing systems at all. It's just showing that like if goals if you live for goals only, yeah, you will you will consistently fall to the level of your system. Like you yeah. won't you won't reach those goals because you'll just like you're you're trying to go up into the right, but you, yes. that's just not natural. Like yeah, you know, you, like with any finance, fitness, health, all this kind of stuff. Like mm-hmm. if you're going up into the right, you're either taking anabolic steroids <laughs> or you're like you know laundering money. Like no business can just do that, <laughs> right? And so like. I think what he, what we're saying in this group is like, there has to be a better way than like just trying to achieve, maximize, yes. complete, complete, complete. Right. And, and even when you do just try to do that, you're constantly being like kind of mm-hmm. brought down to reality. Mm-hmm. And I think, and I think our mentality is I've tried to achieve this goal. I fall into the love of my system. I'll fix my system. Then I'll achieve this goal. I'll fix my system. Like, and you just up end down, up, 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 down, yeah. up down. Yeah. And you end up living in sort of like a one direction wrecking ball type of life. Mm. Um, and I think your family ends up being wrecked the most because of that. Like, yeah. again, we're a group of dads. So this is like, like, we don't want, we don't want to be dads who all their, their singular focus is up and to the right. Yeah. Um, and, and if, if, if you don't know what that means, like in a graph, like if you're tracking financial gains, yes, up and to the, the right, arrow, is good. the line yeah. would be going up and to the right. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So rhythms over goals. We live in a series of sevens, mm. you know, the seven day rhythm, actually Brooke and I, for, during the spring launch are launching a class called rhythms made simple. The class won't be available, but you it's can, available for purchase, but it's coming out this yeah. spring. Um, yes. but it, but during the spring launch, it'll be half off. So if yeah. you buy it while we're open, it's 50% off. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's really geared, our class is really geared towards uh, young families. So if you have young kids, I think rhythms can be kind of overwhelming at times. So that like, yeah. how am I going to do this when my kid do doesn't start? know how to wipe their butt or like, you know, <laughs> can't take a shower by themselves or whatever. Classic like question. those are those two questions that we get. 
I would love to live rhythmically. I just spend all my time wiping my kids' butts. I'm just butts, wiping so. butts all day. My butt, kids' butts, <laughs> cats' butts. All the butts. <laughs> <laughs> Is real weird. Um, yeah, I hope this so, isn't. Every once in a while, we have an episode where I'm like, "Oh, please don't let this be your first." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, please, oh. this should be your first. Okay, yeah. Well. Um, so when you're living rhythm, rhythms over goals, we live in a series of seven, and so like, mm-hmm. you know, God designed the seven day rhythm as a gift for us. It's laid out in creation. Six days we work, and the seventh we rest. Mm-hmm. Um, and because we don't live under the law and Jesus has come to save us from the law, there mm-hmm. is no like condemnation if you don't have a Sabbath or anything like that. Right. But there, it, it is a gift yeah. to be unwrapped. And yeah. if God is giving me a gift, I'd like to unwrap it. And so yeah. when we live rhythmically over goals, we're living in a series of seven. And, and what that has really done for us and for members of this group is like, it has allowed us to see actually more growth Mm. In other, in all ways of life, rather than just what businessmen usually look at, which is financial. Yeah. Um. And uh, question that he asked is, what is your ideal week? And then we, and then are you thoughtfully and carefully living into that week? And so this mm. is something Brooke and I have done, and we'll go through this in our class of like how we literally time block our whole week mm-hmm. on our calendar so that we can live rhythmically. And yeah. and and. Are there days that we don't get it right? Are there days where like the whole thing is out of whack? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But what we're not doing is we're not stringing together 45 of those days and then having a mental breakdown. Yeah. We might have two or three and then it's like, oh, this is Friday. We know what Friday is. Mm-hmm. We might have six Yeah. and we know what Friday is. Mm-hmm. We know what Friday and Saturday are for us, which is our Sabbath. And so I think one of the one of the things that living rhythmically does is it just it just gives you and and I'll say this every time is like Sabbath and and the day of rest becomes such an anchor to your week that no matter how mm-hmm. chaotic, how frustrating, how many things go wrong, how many butts you have to wipe that like <laughs> you still have this anchor to hold steady in the storm of life. Yeah. And and we've experienced that now for 4 years. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's crazy. Four years in, my body is like ready for it. So like we sit down for our Friday night family movie and I'm asleep. Yeah. Like my body's just like, no, you're in rest mode. Yeah. I know that. And if I need it, if I've like been pushing super hard that week or I haven't gotten enough sleep, it's just like within seconds. Yeah. Um, Like the muscle memory. I also feel like Sabbath has done something for, because I see what's, I see number two on here and I feel like Sabbath ties into. Yeah. Uh, do you want to say number two? And then well, I'll, I'll say this oh. um, for the guys that are listening. You know, I know we have a lot of female audiences, but yeah. but this one's for you specifically. Is like, as a man, yeah, you are the spiritual leader, and you should be des- design. You should be at the forefront of the charge for a seven day rhythm mm. to lead your family well, holding that torch. Yes, and a running thousand for percent. It. And, yeah. and it's unfortunate that like so many of our questions about seven day rhythms and and this kind of stuff comes from women. Yeah, because I think, yeah, and not it's a, it's not unfortunate that they're asking, no, no, but no, no, that no. like I hope I hope that like they're just the ones relaying the information because they're the ones following us yeah, yeah, or yeah. seeing the chat box or whatever. But, but we like, do see that message that's like I can't get my husband on board, yeah, and it's like, oh, yeah. and that that that's I I think what that is is like your husband, like Jeremy said it this way at one point is like the Sabbath and the seven day rhythm means that I'm only six days away from experiencing the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. That Sabbath is such like a closely tied element of experience, tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, mm-hmm. like every week that like, mm-hmm. again, no matter how chaotic it gets, I'm six days away. And so I think sometimes there's like maybe some spiritual immaturity there, or there's some, I don't know, like, just like, uh, you know, same reason I won't see the blind side, like, mm-hmm. yeah, no, it's not for me. Like that, that sounds like but too m- religious. But most times when people say something is not for them, it's actually out of fear. Probably mm-hmm. not the blind side yeah. movie example. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you just, maybe it might be bad and you're fearful. It's a waste of your time. Like, I mean, I really don't know, right, yeah, yeah. but like, I would say more often than yeah. not when people are like, Oh, it's just not for me. I'm not into it. Like it's often because I don't know, they don't want to, they don't want to learn something or yeah. experience something or they're afraid something won't be there or that they'll show up. We talked about this in Bible study last night. Like someone was talking about how they're like, sometimes they just don't want to read the Bible. 
And they, and they're like, no, I'm just, I'm not that interested. So I'm going to go do other things. Yeah. And we all circled around to being like, yeah, but isn't when we're like that, isn't it because we're actually afraid that we're going to show up and God won't mm. like, isn't that the fear? That's good. That like, yeah. I know that's what I said to her. I was just like, for me, that's what it is that I like, I'm going to do my part and somewhere I'm afraid you're not going to do yours. And so I'm fearful and I avoid it entirely. Mm. Anyway. And I think that that one thing about living like rhythms in the seven day rhythm, I think a lot of people, their perception of it is that I have to add something new. I have to add more to my life. Yes. And in reality, what the seven day rhythm is, it, it takes away a lot. Like it, it actually, takes away. It, it, it helps clarify it and clarify sort of quantify and, it and removes some decision fatigue. Cause it's like, you know, Tuesdays in our seven day rhythm is taco Tuesdays. It's some sort of Mexican food. Yeah. And so Brooke knows every Tuesday, like yeah. I don't have to make that decision. I've already made it. I've decided once. Yeah. And, and, and that is what our week looks like. Now, can we deviate from the plan and go to the beach randomly or, or, you know, yes. sleep in a little extra? Obviously. Yes, absolutely. A family rhythm is not a family schedule. No. Yeah. Do they connect when, cause sometimes you do need a family schedule. They can connect. Yes, but they are not, they are not equal. It's the reason that Tiny Rhythms, which is behind me, doesn't have time on the board because we wanted to teach our kids that like, yeah. this is just the flow of the day. So a seven day rhythm is the flow of the week. And mm -hmm. within that week, there are definitely like some obligations that like we had a call yesterday or obligations that we have to- At a certain time. Meet, yeah. but those should be the exception mm -hmm. and the rule should be the flow of, of, of the seven day rhythm. Anyway, yeah. so rhythms over goals, how we think differently. I don't think I'll get through all these. That's fine. Let's do um, three. Number two, you, you said you want to talk about number two. So oh, well, no, I it. just think like something I've noticed as we've done Sabbath for many years is so, so, uh, point number pillar number two <laughs> on how we think differently is team over the individual. And I feel like when I think about some of our best mo team moments as a family, where I feel like we're a team, it's often on Sabbath. Yeah. And I think it's because we're all together, which is funny because we're together all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like you and I don't leave for work. And yet I still feel such a sense of like team camaraderie yeah. on Sabbath. Yeah. That was going to be my question. Um, our culture believes that the family is a springboard for your individual life. Mm. And that is ruining family. Like yeah. hyper individualism is crushing the family unit. Yeah, completely. And not and not for the better, not for the better. Like, you know, and so so a pillar of ours in this group is that like we're a family team and you know, their organization is called family teams. Mm -hmm. God has specifically designed your family so that you can work together as a team. Yeah. The idea from family came from God for family came from God. Uh, and we are and, and, and the the if you want to be a, a family team, you are a multi-generational team on mission. Mm -hmm. And that is a high calling. Oh, yeah. And I think the, the first question is like, what does that mean? And it means it means a few different things. And I think it'll mean different things for different family teams. Mm -hmm. um, like the example that they use a lot is like the Kennedys. Uh, I forget. JFK's dad was like, one of you is going to be in the White House. That was their team mission. Yeah. And the older brothers died. So... Mm -hmm left it up to JFK and he became the president. Like, mm -hmm. and it ended up destroying their entire family because it wasn't like a really, they didn't, wasn't maybe the best mission you know, or they didn't do it in the best way. Mm -hmm. Um, but they did it. Right. And it connected them. Right. And united them. That was the, the, it, we're not giving this as like a, they did, they're amazing. Yeah. But just as like, that's what it looks like for a family to be on, yeah. on mission. And so your mission might be to plant churches, uh, in, unreached places. Your mm -hmm. mission might be to start businesses and fund kingdom endeavors. Your mm -hmm. mission might be to speak for the unborn or be a part of the pro-life movement. Your mm -hmm. mission might be to, um, you know, just create an atmosphere of joy and hospitality for friends and family. Like it can be a wide variety of things, Yeah. but the, this is where the multi-generational thing happens is like, it should be a mission goal that's big enough that you can't accomplish it in your lifetime mm. because that will give your kids and your, your, your team purpose to see it through. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so, but I don't think it's something that you can just take lightly coming up with. Like, like I, I honestly feel like we're still working on ours, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. as a young family with young kids that like, I don't know if we have complete clarity on what that family team 
mission of ours is. Mm -hmm. I think we have aspects of it. I think we have parts of it, but I don't think we're fully, it hasn't been fully completed. Yeah. We're like Jeremy, his is like to teach these pillars right. in this way of life that yeah. like, that's their, like their family team mission is to like restore family teams. Fam <laughs> yeah. Um, which yeah. is awesome. And like, and they're all involved, yeah. you know? And so, um, again, he's speaking to fathers. You are the coach of the family and you are building a team. Mm. How did God make this team? What assignments are this team on? And your fruitfulness creates multiplication and your multiplication creates fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. And so it's like all, all th there's an incredible amount of weight on yeah. you as, as the coach of this family, yeah. as, as a dad. Um, it just is, there's a, an incredible amount of weight as you, as a, as a mom in this family. And so like what, you know, have language, have conversations, have the ability to talk about that. Because I think like, again, TJF 10 years ago or even five years ago would have just been like, I don't know, like that's for, some, that's for someone else. Like that's not for me. I, I don't want to be a multi-generational family. I don't know what that means. And I'm too afraid to ask. So I'm not going to exactly. talk about it. Fear. You're like, I don't um, know. I'm not interested because you're actually afraid yeah. of something. I'm actually afraid. And I talked about this last week of being called up to a higher standard because mm -hmm. then that means I have to live at that higher standard. Mm -hmm. And that is terrifying. Right. Because there's more room for failure. The yeah. higher up I go, the steps the harder the fall will be. And I have this fear that I'm going to fall and fail. Mm. Fully knowing that God's grace is there to catch me and set yeah. me back down on the bottom step and say, hey, I'm here <laughs> to, to walk with you again. Yeah. Um, and so <clears throat> uh, the, the one of the big things that he talked about during this session was like, the mission needs to encompass the entire team, not just one member. And so like if you as a follower of Jesus are just like super passionate about... I don't know, reaching the lost, be mm -hmm. like evangelism, but that doesn't percolate through your whole team. That's probably that. Can you individually do that? Yes. Can that be a part of your family mission? Right. Yes. But it shouldn't be like, you know, we're going to live in Africa or South America because like evangelism to those countries is like my goal. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just bringing my team along. Yeah. And, and, and then, so some guys ask some questions of like, how do we do this? Yeah. How like my kids are eight and five yeah. and not even two, I don't know what they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it's like, I think it takes time to develop. Yeah. And I think, you know, it obviously starts with us, you know, having these hard conversations and sort of soul searching, understanding. Well, yeah, I mean, you think about an actual team and if we're like the coach and assistant coach or I don't know, whatever you want to call us, coaches, like coaches of a real team need to have conversations with yeah. one another. Yeah. And good coaches are going to look at their actual yep. roster of players and be like, here's their gifts. Here's this. This is what this one told me, blah, 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 blah. And they're going to use that to move their team forward or not even just forward, but like, I mean, in a, in a sports sense, you know, forward yeah. towards wins, but like, and like I we, hope coaches aren't just like, Oh, it doesn't matter about any of yeah. them. Here's what we want. Yeah. A thousand like, percent. Yeah. What if you have somebody really terrible at something or somebody really yeah. good at something? And so like <laughs> our, like, and, and so we talked about sort of like family vision, family mission, all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff kind of went together. And, and something that Jeremy said that I wrote down said the family vision will determine the weeks, months, and years of your life. Mm -hmm. um, and just like that, even if you might not know what your multi-generational goal is, which I, I think, again, is, is, a, is a challenging thing to know. Like yeah. I'm not saying you'll find that out in a weekend. Right. Um, you should still work on having a family vision, family motto, family, like something that unite, you know, like every team, every sports team has a logo. Like yeah. it's something to unite under, yeah. you know? And so yeah. there, there's an element of having that. And so like for us, it's like, we are a family that loves Jesus, seeks Seek rest, rest, chooses, chooses joy, joy and, and walks in love. love. We say that every Friday before our Sabbath dinner. And like, that is what we're united under. Mm -hmm. that, that is our vision. And so that determines our weeks, our days, our months, and our years. Like yeah. it, it, it has an impact and it will continue to have an impact on our daughters as they grow. Mm -hmm. They will, that will be ingrained into their, like who they are. Yeah. Um, and so um, he said, and then he said this, which I think is really super powerful. Husband, wife, and children are in submission to each other, like father, son, and Holy spirit. Like we are an, mm. we are an organization. A We're unit. a team. We're yeah. working together together. Some people will lead in some ways. Some will follow in some ways. Some will lead in other ways. Some will follow in other ways. But like yeah. we are all on the same team working together, which is just 
super powerful. And again, like Brooke said, Sabbath has been a huge part of that. And our kids are young. And so there's an element of like, we're, there's a lot of times where we're just wiping butts and, mm -hmm. and making sure babies are fed. Mm -hmm. And so we don't feel that sort of team mentality of like, we're all doing this really, you know, <laughs> amazing thing for the Lord. Like we're uh, just, <laughs> just trying to survive at times. But I think having the, even just the mentality inside of you that this, that you want to create a family team and not just 10 and in, five individuals, mm -hmm. um, will change the way that you parent, change the way that you interact, change the questions that you ask yeah. um, in a really positive way to bring your family together. Because, I mean, I'm sure you listening to this, it's it's either happened in your family where all your siblings are individuals mm -hmm. and you guys see each other at Christmas or it's happened in a friend's family where like, you know, and, and, yeah. and, I, and I know that if you have kids, you do not want that to happen in your family. Right. You, it's like, uh, you know, as a parent, like I want my kids to know individually their gifts and their talents and like who God says they are and the identity he speaks mm -hmm. over them. Like in those ways yeah. it's individualized, but not in the way that like culture is like that, that use your family for, for you, what they give it's you all about you. And it's all yeah. about what you want and the direction you're yeah. going. And like, if, if that doesn't suit you, leave it behind yeah. it's often your family and mm -hmm. like, you know, stuff like that. That's yeah. One of the things sad. he said, one of the things we we're facing with team over individual is that culture will tell your kids that if your family is taking anything away from the individual, it is destroying you. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, and that's just not tr the truth. Like your yeah. family will end up, you know, most families, right. not all. Um, and if you're, you know, if you want to raise a godly family and raise godly children, like you're going to be the safe haven for them, the, mm -hmm. the, the anchor for them, the, the place of rest and, and, and peace for them. And, hopefully that's strong enough and mm -hmm. you're working at that intentionally enough that even if someone is going to kind of like, even if the devil's going to whisper in their ear and say, Hey, you should be on your own. Mm -hmm. You need to be an individual. Your family's taking that from you. Yeah. Um, you can hold fast to them because you're, you've been cultivating that team environment in your family long enough. Yeah. All right. We'll do one more. Sure. Um, okay. Number three. Again, this is the way we think differently at Integrated. So you're getting an inside scoop. Integrated, I'd say, in, in our lives because yeah. we've integrated it, right? Nice. Number nice. three, Thanks. integration Thanks. over balance. We, else, we, also, we want to always ask the question, is integration possible? We are constantly doing creative inspiration in integration. Mm -hmm. Can I take a small hit in productivity to have a massive payoff for my family? Right. And... um. And then he said this, which I thought was very convicting. I couldn't find a verse in the Bible that told me to send my kids to, to school for eight hours a day. <laughs> and again, he, you know, there's guys in the class and in, in the group that their kids go to regular school. Like right, it's not right. a, it wasn't. It's not a. <sighs> and he's like, yeah, like yeah. people are gonna be like, oh, well, I can't do that. So no, this works for me. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Um, plenty of guys their kids go to regular school. He, yeah. Jeremy himself sent his kids to regular school for a little bit to like yeah. try it out. He calls it homeschool or public school camp, <laughs> which is so funny. Um, and it's true though. Like if we're living based off of the Bible, yeah, there isn't a verse that says that. And right. so well, why, culturally back then, it, no. And so you why do we in the home and you yeah. were taught your family's trades and you, yeah. Yeah. And we like the Western idea of this like family unit, is a is an experiment that has not been going on for very long and yeah. in terms of the world yeah. in terms of the, the history of humanity and so if you look at cult, if it's going great i don't you know <laughs> i drove through los angeles recently and i don't know <laughs> if it's going great and so again this doesn't mean you can't do regular school but like it, it shouldn't just like we shouldn't just default to the cultural norms if we are trying to live a Christian life. Right. And I think that's what's happened. We for, should be thinking differently. And yeah. if through that thinking differently, your kids are going to go to a regular school forever or for a period of time, like you can still land there, but it's like, I hope you're thinking about it first and foremost yeah, before and, just accepting the default, yep. you know? And so what he means by integration is like, can I integrate my kids into what I'm doing? Can mm -hmm. they, you know, if I was a carpenter back yeah. in the day, yeah. building tables and chairs, my son or daughter would be helping sweep the floor. They would help hold the wood. They would help, yeah. you know, 
whatever. Yeah, whatever. They'd just be involved. And, and you know, even just even if it was just they're in the room watching you. Yeah, a thousand they're percent. They're aware of what their parents are doing. And now they're watching Bluey while we work. Yeah. They're watching Disney while we clean the garage. Yeah. And so if integration is possible and if it makes productivity just a little bit down, I'm going to take that hit. And that's yeah. sort of what we've decided in our lives. Yeah. Now, is that always true? Like we have lots to do for this collection. I'm not having June sit at my computer and type for me. Right. Like, you know, right. there, there are some boundaries to that that just come naturally, but mm -hmm. I want to integrate as much as possible so that my kids can learn from me. Because mm -hmm. and he said, if I was going to study the Bible, what does the Bible say a child does between two and adulthood? A child is constantly with their parents, having conversations with their parents about what they're studying in the scripture. And so we are teaching our kids about justice and righteousness when they are with us. Mm -hmm. And if we've sent them away all the time from not being with us, Culture is teaching them justice and righteousness. Yeah. And culture is not a very good teacher. Mm. And so that is super convicting to me because I often find myself just being like, oh, just like, give me, give me five minutes. Like, yeah. you know. And, and, and again, I got, like, I don't want to keep being like, I don't want to keep yeah. undercutting what we're saying, but like, absolutely. There are times where you need five minutes and I need 20 minutes and we talk about it and it happens and like, we make it a priority. But one of my, my examples of integration is like, can I take a kid with me to run errands? Yep. Like, will it really ruin everything if right. I bring them? Of yeah. course not. And can I take a kid to run errands without giving them something to distract them while yes. we do it? Right. Yes. And the yeah. answer is yes, you can. Yeah. And and as you do it more and more, they become they more learn. integrated and they learn about it. And now they're learning what you buy and what you need and how to work and like oh, yeah. how to put things on the checkout register and all this kind of stuff. So like my current form of integration is I bring June or Sunny or sometimes both to me to the gym with me on oh, Fridays. Yeah, we were talking like, about this. I was like, I was sitting so, there and I'm like, if kid, if people can bring their dogs. <laughs> I can bring my kids. <laughs> like that, that's my, like, if a dog is welcome at work, so are my kids. Like, I'm just, I'm just gonna make that rule in my life. If a dog can walk through Target, so can my kids. Like, yeah. you know, and so I just, I started bringing them. And the reason I wanted to bring them is one, I want, I want them to see their dad work super, super hard. Yeah. I want them to know that and have an example of like, wow, physical work is hard, but it can be done. And then mm -hmm. I want to see them see other people do that. Yeah. So that they have, they learn every Friday that like you can sweat and you can fall to the ground and you can be panting and you can <laughs> lift heavy weights and you can do hard things. Like I want mm -hmm. them to see that so that in their life, when those things come to come, when they come face to face with those things, they, they learn. They're them. not as fearful They're and they don't fearful. say that's not for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, one thing he said, I'll read the, I'll read the rest of my notes here. How much can integration add to your life? An extra hour a week, five hours a week? Like, you know, how like, much integration can you add to your life? Yeah, that's true. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a question you should be asking. And, and with little kids, it's going to be less. Like, yeah, there's yeah. definitely going to be like, I feel like we're only starting to see the sweet spot with June. Yeah. Like, you know, but like with Daisy right now, like, no, I'm not going to take, <laughs> I'm not going to take her certain places yeah. or expect certain things. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, and then he said, we over identify with our work, but even at work, we are still a father bringing a kid mm -hmm. with you really helps that hit home. And so like, yeah, like, especially if you have a job, you know, again, I'm not saying take your kid to work every single day. Right. Although, uh, like I, I, I think there is an environment and there's probably bosses who would be okay with it, who would be okay with kids coming to work at least maybe a Friday or the last Friday of the month. Like, yeah, let's try it. I don't know. Give yeah. it a shot. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Because it will remind your boss mm -hmm. that you are a dad. Yeah. And he will treat you differently because of that. Yeah. And like there, there's some power there. Like, yeah. you know, um, and so that, so he said that and he said, <clears throat> I, and so this is what I wrote because he was talking, but I wrote this. I won't always have an eight year old kid to spend time with. Mm. And that is so convicting and so challenging and so powerful that like June is eight now, I will have three more chances to have an eight-year-old mm -hmm. to spend time, or two more chances right. to have an eight-year-old to spend time with. And eight-year-olds are filled with wonder and excitement and they're like not too cool for you and they think you're like just funny <laughs> and amazing and like I won't always have that. And yeah. so I don't want to waste it. So yeah. if, if my productivity 
takes a hit this week because an eight-year-old was asking me questions while I was typing up product descriptions. Yeah. So be it. Yeah. To me, that is worth it. And that is something that I actually want to pursue and not want to like shove into the corner and, right. you know, say not now or not yet. Um, yeah. uh, and then the last thing he said is no one looks back and says, I wish I would have, I wish I wouldn't have integrated as much. Right. You know, that's yeah. just not something you say. Yeah. I wish I would have No, spent you don't get, yeah, you don't get to later in life and go, you know what? Oh, we spent way too much time together as family and we were, we're too connected and too, all, too all the things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so those are the three of them. Mm. We're at an hour, so I'll stop. But any, any like thoughts on all that or? No, I think there, I think those are really awesome, like guiding. It is a code. It is a way to look at okay, we are trying to do something different and not just in the name of doing something different. Right. It's not just like a, let's just change the system. Like, yeah. you know, it's not even that. It's just like, I think- We're actually trying to do something more ancient. Yes. You yeah. know, yeah. because they changed the system Yeah. and it has severely damaged yeah. families. Yeah. I feel like there's so many things, use, using the word ancient, that are circling back around yeah. and proving to be- the the better way not not really in ancient like ancient practices with a modern twist yeah. you know like it's yeah like, yeah because it's like we're not living in ancient yeah. times like we have phones and we have all this stuff so i don't want to go hunt it's for not boar. literally the same <laughs> but the like pillars yeah and the yeah it is and, and so i guess my like i always try to end with sort of some encouragement for you is like do you want to raise, you know, especially for the parents out there or, you know, the people, you know, I know there are a lot of people who want to be parents who mm -hmm. listen to not like you're a want to be parent, but like, right. You want to be a parent. Yeah. Um, these are, these are conversations and questions and ideals and structures that I wish we would have had many more conversations about because it would have changed the way we raised June a little bit. It would have changed bit. the way we like structured some of the things that we did. Yeah. Um, it probably would have pushed us to have kids earlier. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And maybe more, mm -hmm. you know? And so there's, there's some powerful conversations to have that I think would radically transform your life mm. just in those two things alone. Like you, you, you'll probably have kids earlier and you'll probably have more. Yeah. And you'll be better for it. Right. Like be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. That is a directive given to us. Mm -hmm. And I think culture has kind of made us forget that a little bit, a lot of it, a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. My, really my, good. my encouragement is just to like talk about these with your spouse Yeah, and like, you know, have really honest, open conversations of like, let's talk about this. Let's not like decide on anything. Let's not just like throw out everything that we do in the name right. of this. Like, right. Cause I think that's what, you know, I've said that it, all the new guys that integrated, like come back and they're like, Hey, we're doing everything different in our lives. And I are like, Whoa, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, welcome home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think the conversations could be super valuable just both to like where you are, how you see it, how you want to see things, mm -hmm. um, that I think would just have a super long impact. So, we have not given away discount code. Oh boy. Should it be pumpkin boy? Yes. Yeah. So 100%. the discount code is pumpkin boy. Um, <laughs> all one word, obviously, <laughs> um, to save extra, uh, for the spring collection because yeah. you listen to the podcast and we really, really appreciate that. You could also get VIP access one day early. If you go to Instagram and subscribe for four ninety nine a month, mm -hmm. um, and you could subscribe for one month if that works for you. And I think that is it for episode 159 wow. of the Walk and Love podcast. Wow. Wow, 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 Peter? wow. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making us a part of your week. Okay, okay I, I love, love you. Bye. bye.